Whenever trying to break down the skeleton code, start from the bottom, which is where the first subroutine gets called. Here, it's using an if statement, saying if the name equal to main. What does this mean? Well, all it means is underscore underscore name underscore underscore is a placeholder for the system's name for your project's file. And underscore underscore main underscore underscore is the actual name of the main file in your project. So it's essentially asking, are we in the main file? The answer is always yes here. So we'll run the only line in this if statement, which is to call a subroutine called main. Looking at the main subroutine, immediately we know it takes no parameters and it's a procedure as it has no values. The first line of main is creating an object called this game. And the object is coming from the Destan class. If we look at the Destan class quickly, we can see what those parameters are for. So we have the parameters R, C, and number of pieces. We know number of pieces will obviously refer to the number of pieces a player can have, but what about R and C? Well, by looking a little further at the attributes on this class, we can see that C is being assigned to an attribute called number of columns, and R is assigned to an attribute called number of rows. So R and C represent columns and rows. Let's look back at the main subroutine. Now these numbers being passed through the parameters of the Destan class make plenty of sense. Six rows and six columns because Destan is played on a six by six grid. And four pieces as a reference to how many normal pieces a player gets. The next line calls for the play game method to be called. By the way, if you're not very comfortable with the terminology of classes, uh, an attribute is what you would normally call a variable or a constant in a data structure. And a method is what you would normally call a subroutine. So let's have a look at what the play game method is doing. So initially, we have a variable called game over. This is a Boolean value set to false. We can probably expect this to be used with some kind of while loop or if statement, and we'll come across this later. Or in fact, we'll come across it now, as the very next line says, while not game over. Amazing. So here we have a while loop where the below instructions will run until the game has finished. First, we are calling a method called display state. Let's look at that now. Display state initially calls upon a method called display board. So let's go there. The display board method sets up the six by six to stand board. It is quite confusing, but it's not too difficult to understand what's happening. The very first line is one you should become familiar with as we see components on this line a few times in the code. This backslash n immediately tells Python to start a new line. Then the speech marks with a space will simply be used to add space. This is to push the grid a little closer towards the center of the screen. The end equals blank speech marks actually does the opposite of backslash m. Where backslash n says start a new line, end equals blank speech marks says stay on this line. Next, we start our loop for the columns. If you've seen the example shown in the previous material, you'll see our grid has column numbers. Our loop will run as many times as there are columns in our grid. It will then turn the column variables values into a string and place this item in position of the column headings. The column variable is running through a range of numbers in our loop, therefore creating the numbers for our column headings. You can then see there's another for loop which places lines under the numbers. If you test the section out on its own, you'll see this makes the border for our grid. Finally, we have another for loop which is using the concept I've just mentioned, but to produce all of the rows in our grid. That's how the display board method works. It just creates the board. Let's now go back to display state to see what else that method is doing. Next, we see it outputs the message move option offer. If you look at the move option offer attribute earlier in the code, you'll see it's an array. Then we have move option offer position, in this in the array. Initially in our code, this variable attribute is set to zero, which is why every time you run this code, you end up with the same option showing just there. Next, we have the attribute get player state as string being called. Let's see what this is doing. So here we can see the player's name, current score, as well as the move option Q for the player is going to be displayed. This is a fairly straightforward method here. Again, we see that backlash N, which indicates the information should be shown on the new line. It's good to note this information could be seen as a function 
as it uses a return command. The line in this method does not output anything. The data only gets presented to the user in the display state method with the line you see here. We can then see to finish off display state is the second line to confirm whose turn it is. That's our initial start in the game. Join me in the next video where we head back to the play game method to see what else is happening in the Distan code.